Done. It's recording now. All right. Uh, so this is the all hands call for what's today. It's the 19th of February. Uh, and um, uh, so first item, actually, since we're, we're coming off of some technical difficulties with getting this started, how did the Zoom presentation, presentation mode Zoom test run go? Did that happen this week? It's happening this Wednesday. It's actually one of the items on the agenda. Just oh, okay. Further down. Uh, all right. And so I'll move my OKR mid-quarters thing further down. So the next item is to beat with uh, docs.window.ipfs.md. Uh, that's Lytle, actually. Oh, Lytle. Go for it. Sorry, I was like uh, distracted. <laughs> uh, are we at the... Your agenda item, which is oh, wow. published initial version of docs.window.ipfs.md. All right, yeah. So like it's a, a quick uh, PSA from my end. Uh, we created the initial uh, introductory document regarding window IPFS object, which is introduced when you install IPFS companion. Uh, it's a very basic initial version of uh, document for developers and users. And uh, my like request or uh, like, it would be very nice if someone uh, interested in uh, using window IPFS uh, took a look at it. And if you have any questions that are not answered by this document, uh, please create an issue or ideally uh, submit pull request with question so that we can address, uh, create a Q&A document uh, around that uh, PR uh, to that document. Uh, this will be, this is narrowly done. Uh, we are uh, finalizing some uh, uh, permission based uh, uh, user interface and uh, we will probably have a beta ready with all, all security related uh, fixes to that. Uh, version that is in the master branch is functional, but it does not uh, solve all security issues. So you can experiment with that, but it's not safe to use yet. Uh, that's, that's, that. that's all from my end. Does anyone have questions? Oh, why? Hey, Lionel, is window IPFS part of station? I'm not 100% clear about this. No, no, like uh, window IPFS is uh, something that will all be present on every web page after you install our browser extension. Browser extension is called IPFS companion. So uh, what we decided is that if you have IPFS companion installed, you will have this object on every web page it's like extension of your browser engine. Uh, you can disable access to this API permanently for all pages, but for uh, like development and initial experiments, we will ship with it and enabled uh, by default. But you will have to explicitly grant access to specific APIs to a specific web page or even uh, path on the let's say IPFS gateway. All right, were there other questions? Johnny? Yeah, so just the uh, security concerns. So this is, uh, act, this is using a proxy to your running Go IPFS or JIS IPFS instances. So it's not its own instance of an IPFS. So the key management is stored in either Chrome um, uh, uh, sandbox. So is that being encrypted and uh, for runtime and uh, like a secure vault? Well, like right now it's like uh, you have this browser extension and this browser extension will be able to ship its own JS IPFS node. Or you can set up your, this browser extension to connect to external nodes. And right now, we assume the access 
to that there are there is no access control when when it comes uh, when uh, between the browser extension and your node uh, if you like set up some kind of uh, basic alpha or stuff like that maybe that will work but right now we don't have any key, key based uh, access control for node what we do is to assume that you want to limit access to your node between browser extension and web page and that is when we have access control uh, browser extension is kind of like in the god mode right now it can execute any apis victory kind of uh, like a simple explanation would be how the geolocation uh, permissions in the browser work today, right? or the microphone, where you navigate to a page and they try to use IPFS from the browser extension, and you never used it before, there will be a little pop-up that requests your uh, permission to use files add or whatever. So nothing is handled by the actual extension. It's just a proxy with like a tiny ACL layer tied to the origin of the website. Yeah, I think that's a good metaphor. We may be, uh, we may update the document to include that. That's very good, Victor. Thank you. Uh, to be. What about other extensions? Uh, so, if an extension wants to use Windows.ipfs, but itself will be present in different web pages, like uh, how would that work there? Like uh, right now, if there is an ex okay so uh, when it comes to window ipfs it's just there so if you have a extend uh, other uh, browser extension that can inject content scripts into web pages it will just have access to window ipfs and it will be able to execute uh, javascript against that that's one of the reasons why we have access control to that uh, this is uh, purely based on the uh, content scripts within a web page. Uh, we will probably have a separate API for exposing the same set of APIs to other browser extensions within a native API, but that one will be probably done after we are done with this one. We don't want to like uh, spread ourselves too thin. I'll just jump in before Johnny. It sounds like there is definitely a lot of document. There's this documentation has to be really, really clear. Yeah, yeah, that, that like what? that's my main reason why I surfaced this. We want to source all the questions and ideally just do it uh, via GitHub so that others can like uh, uh, reuse the question. Right. Okay, Johnny. I'll also just, uh, can you run multiple um, proxies, one for, let's say, public IPFS and then one for a private one at the same time? Uh, right now, no. Right now, uh, you have like your canonical node set up in your browser extension. Uh, you can, of course, switch between different uh, nodes within the uh, preferences screen, but at one time you have access to only one node. Okay. Okay, I'll defer the rest of the discussion to GitHub. Uh, uh, Lido, can you add the link to where the discussion will be happening in GitHub? Yeah, sure. All right, thanks. All right, so the next item, webinar test to be. All right, this is just like a kind reminder. This Wednesday we will test the webinar feature of Zoom and it's the feature that will enable us to live stream to YouTube and get the recording there automatically without having to do this, all of these extra steps in the beginning of the call. Um, right now we have four people uh, that have volunteered to test it with me. Uh, essentially what I'm going to do is create a script because I'm going to create a webinar as a host and I'm going to give host to someone else by email, but I'm going to ask someone that is not a host to join the webinar first and see if they can open the call without any of the hosts being present. Uh, and then, well, and then there will be more steps and, and it was just like, have probably a Google doc shared between all the people that are participating in a chat, either to IRC or to the Google doc itself. And it was just like follow step by step and, and make sure we have all of our questions answered. 
And so if you want to partake on this, uh, subscribe to the issue, uh, just leave your handle there. Um, and I'll send you details tomorrow with the script for Wednesday. Any questions? Who's planning to participate in that test? All right, Jay. Jay, Lars, Dimitri, who is not able to join us in this call today, but he also wants to join. Go out. Yeah. OK. All right. Well, then, next agenda item, uh, admin data roads. Good time to discuss the all hands call evolution. Yeah, I just threw that in there really quickly because if I remember correctly, the part of the purpose of the um, conference test and the streaming to YouTube was more inclusiveness in this call. Um, and I was kind of tasked with creating um, possible action items for evolving this call to uh, be more inclusive, which I think might be across purposes with the sprint meetings. So I'm essentially proposing creating a new call for newcomers, new ideas, just um, something more comfortable for new people to throw in rather than going all through these existing sprint bullet points. Uh, so could you, uh, so I'm just, I was following your link and you linked to an issue that's about making these calls shorter, but then it looks like you've added a comment at the bottom of that that's linking to a proposal. Uh, could you maybe just give the synopsis of what that proposal is? Sure thing. Uh, the, if you follow the thread in that link, it um, started as just short and everything the half hour, but then went into, okay, when do we do demos? Uh, how do we do demos? And to me, that looked like it was becoming kind of a call evolution discussion. Uh, so I, I proposed, okay, this is part of that call evolution. And um, maybe just uh, instead of burdening this call, uh, given the half an hour constraint that was being proposed already, uh, creating a new call maybe before the research call uh, weekly, which is a little more um, open-ended and uh, just having space for newcomers or just new ideas to come in without burdening the existing all hands. All right. Would you be able to, I'm trying to, I'm, so I'm trying to listen to you and read your proposal at the same time. Is there, are you, so are you proposing to have a discussion about how it should be structured? Are you, are you proposing that we have some sort of discussion on GitHub about a completely different structure for these calls? Yeah, it could be that existing uh, issue, uh, which started with the half an hour thing, but seems more wide ranging to me. Or uh, we can fork it off to a new issue or even a, um, a discourse uh, community discussion if you want. My inclination would be open a new GitHub issue and pose it as a proposal. Like I propose that we change the all hands calls to have X structure so that then people can. Okay. In that case, I would actually say um, I propose a new call uh, in order not to burden all hands, and um, it should have that structure, that kind of thing. Okay, Johnny? How about just um, take some of the items on discourse and actually just have a webinar to actually to walk through them, and so that it's not burning the all hands call, but actually like it, it's meaningful dialogue about the top issues that are coming up on, on discourse, whether it be uh, introduction to IPFS, uh, what is a DAG, and just um, to roll through and actually have uh, video documentation of, of those items in discourse. I, I find discourse like just, it's just a whole bunch of stuff and, I, and I, I, not very useful, but I think uh, I'm very much a visual learner and I like to see examples and I, I think it, it allows to kill two birds with one stone, which is actually have a 
generalized discussion on the IPFS, not burning the all hands uh, contribute contributors, but actually it has bringing in a community with watching videos and yet at the same time tackling those those items on discourse. Yeah, I like that proposal. I'm also wondering, so it's like there's that and open discussion and then there's time for demos and then there's time for the teams to coordinate. And I agree that breaking it up might make sense. And so that each of them, it doesn't really influence the time commitment of the others. Um, yeah, I, I feel like if you open a GitHub issue, that's the best way for us to sort of collect the ideas and then we could revisit next week. Um, but if anyone okay, else has, I'll do that. but if anyone else has ideas right now that you want to kick out that, that Jerry could add to that issue or sort of fold in his comments, go ahead and speak up. Okay, great. Well, then I look forward to seeing that, that, that item evolving because you're, you're definitely right that it's a little bit murky of like, what is this specific call for? And if we shorten it to 30 minutes, what is getting cut out? and what is being included. Um, so thanks for making it more explicit and for connecting with that that connects with inclusiveness and how accessible these calls feel. Anything else on that one? Okay. All right. Now I've, I've lost myself in the, in the notes. Is it David? Yeah, David, the JSIP FIST release. Um, just quick announcement, there will be a JS IPFS release coming up, uh, hopefully this week. You can see the link to the issue. Yeah, awesome. Uh, there's a, really a lot of stuff, like the, the last release was in January 16th, so one month, and there was new things added to Leap Peer to Peer, which is available through JS IPFS. There were new things added to IPLD that also are available through JSIPFS and also a lot of things added to JSIPFS. A lot of bug fixes, a lot of docs, um, lots of improved examples. As usual, I will create the highlight section. It just takes some time to write. And so right now we have the issue <laughs> and you have like the release checklist. During this week, you'll see the, all the highlights. Um, and, and yeah, if you are using JSIPFS, and if you have a batch of tests that we can easily try them, like just click on the repo and PM link the latest JSIP tests and run a test and see if something breaks, let me know because I would love to test your app and help you migrate to the new IPFS or even understand if we broke something that we didn't want them to. Um, there were some minor API changes and nothing on the main API, mostly on the leap peer peer one. Um, and yeah, that's it. Follow up on the issue, or if you have any questions now, I'm here to answer them. All right, I guess that's it. You can continue, right? Yeah. Oh, there's a question here, Rob. Uh, I I didn't have a question about the the JSIPFS stuff. I wanted to let you finish on that. I just had a thought about the call things that I wanted to ask about if nobody has other JS release questions. Yeah, go for um, it. So, so I just wanted to ask, not, not necessarily as a proposal, but has anybody here tried before, since I haven't been around that long, um, having some sort of regular, like few hour, two or three long, like office hour sort of time, that's a very like beginner friendly, like, sign on and ask questions and we'll have one or two like people who work on go IPFS or just IPFS around to answer those. Cause I, I feel like a lot of what I'm hearing is that uh, there's like a important mechanistic aspect to this call and that's necessarily like not going to be super friendly to a newcomer. Like somebody has to feel comfortable with IPFS before they feel like comfortable at the level that they're like, I want to participate in this call about making it work as opposed to like getting to use it. Um, so like, and I hear this like have a different call as a sort of sense of like, what's the more beginner, new people to the community welcome open space. And I think a lot of that revolves around not being so in it and all the minutia about what happens here, but like big picture, like feeling comfortable in the community and then maybe showing up to office hours to like help explain to other people or whatever. 
So just a thought, so mm -hmm. nice question. Uh, well, um, from the beginning of the project, we definitely tried multiple versions of office hours. Uh, in the beginning, it was all IRC. We didn't even have calls and like we were available from a period of time every day that like we were like just paying a lot of attention to IRC and people would come and ask questions. Well, the IRC channel now has like more than a thousand people uh, and makes it really hard to have discussions there. And so then we jump into calls and we had calls per project and they were both like PM calls and answer questions calls. Uh, then it evolved to this type of call that we have right now. We try to have office hours again. And, and, and I think the reason why we stopped was not because they were not useful. It's just a matter of keeping the pace because when you have office hours every week, everyone knows that they can count on those office hours, but not when you fail a week or two because you are in conferences or like your time zones are all shuffled up because that, that sometimes happens. It makes it really hard for them to community to understand when we are available and when we are not. And, and so it kind of like derailed and, and we lost that momentum there. Uh, I totally agree. Like having a place where the community can come and learn from the people that are hacking like every day on the project will be very useful because they, they can help us write the docs, write the blog posts, etc. cetera. Um, it is just like hard to keep everyone in check, making sure that the office hours happen and that they are productive and that they are well communicated and that there is notes with like those asked questions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so if people want to like try it again, I'll definitely be really up to, to try it again. Um, probably this time with a little bit more explicit format than the previous ones. I would also want to find a way to put a bound on it. I think two hours every week out of people's time is a lot of time. And so, so figuring out how to, it, it, like, yeah, how to, how to put a right framing on it that it's not over committing or so that it's sustainable basically. like looking at it also uh one on a uh, one-on-one -on -one time with developers and so on is very very useful but i think there should be added benefit to the rest of the community because this hour or two that developers spends literally uh, like creating ad hoc documentation for someone could be spent at the same time creating this documentation for everyone. So some approach of like, like create, like at the same time creating the documentation that is being transferred by call and creating it in a form that allows others to also use it would be also great. Yeah, I guess that was that would come back to the proposal of uh, the Johnny's proposal of basically picking, plucking things from discourse, and telling people in advance, we're going to talk about this topic this week, and and so then people who are interested in that topic know that it's going to be discussed. They join in. We know that like there's a framing around that recording of it's a discussion of that topic. You can add a link to it from that discourse issue. Um, so that rather than it being entirely unstructured um, of just show up at this time if you have questions, um, but then that takes, then there's that curatorial overhead of choosing what's a feature and scheduling it and telling everyone that it's scheduled and all of that. So we would have to make sure to uh, make provisions for doing that. Uh, could we do, could we defer that discussion to the GitHub issue? Yes. Uh, evolving the call. Great. Uh, all right. So okay, our mid quarter scores. So last week we talked about how this worked. If you follow the link, oh wait, I'll I'll share my screen. Um, which one am I sharing? This one. Okay. So. Uh, last week, I showed everyone how we're doing these scores that, um, well, let's look at the core working groups sheet first. 
so core working group set a bunch of uh, a bunch of objectives and a bunch of key results that measure whether they're making progress for those towards those objectives um, and then we rank them by priority p0 being the highest priority p4 being the lowest every kr has an owner and then what we did this last week is that we set um so for for mine for this first one i i think i've done about a third of the work towards actually hitting this key result and i think that i'm projecting even though we're halfway through the quarter i'm projecting that by the end of the quarter i'll have this done so i'm projecting a one out on it even though i've only done a third of the work right now um, so that's what everyone has done with all of their krs they've put in how much work have i done up to now and how much do i think will be done at the end of the quarter on this particular key result and so we have lots and lots of working groups uh, and lots and lots of KRs. One of the things that we're learning is ideally you should only have like three objectives for each of these sheets, for each of these working groups. And within each of those objectives, there should only be like a maximum of four KRs. It should be like three or four KRs, maybe five, where um, if you look through these sheets, some of the KRs, are, some of the groups have like lots and lots of KRs under an individual objective. And we just sort of let that happen. We said, you know, we're learning something new. This is, it's a, it's a new skill. It's a new thing. We're trying it out. So we've left, left room for, for how people to have a lot of noise in these sheets. But as a result, it makes it a little bit hard to read unless you're really involved in the, the work of that. Um, that particular group. So we have this one sheet that gives you sort of bubbled up version that just shows you the objectives for each of the working groups. Uh, and I've, I've extended that to show you what their scores are. Um, so I can report back from the core working group. Uh, this is basically the tech leads plus one plus me. Uh, and it's more figuring out the overall structure. And you could say the essential thing we're focusing on is, is giving clarity to what is this structure for working groups how do working groups form how do they dissolve how do they uh what are their responsibilities um and i've been working on an rfc to for that proposes that um and actually if you go to ipfs slash rfc um the in that github repo you can see that stuff evolving it's not quite ready for review but if you're especially curious you could look um uh, Jeremy's not here to give an update on the Go IPFS work. Um, David, do you want to give a quick update on the JS IPFS work? Uh, sure. Although JS IPFS is a little bit like sharded across also JS IP to peer and JS IPLD, the um, the objectives, the primary objectives for JS IPFS this quarter were really growing the team and have people dedicated to the most pressing issues like things like PhD, more people on relay. Uh, and so on. Uh, uh, Matt, if you don't mind, I can just switch in the tab so that people can. Oh, or. Oh, to the JS. Do you want the details? Yeah, I think it just helps. So you can see here, it's more about getting more people focused so that there is more developers, like full time developers, like on top of the, the, the issues. Um, for. For JSLI peer to peer, um, there is no like spreadsheet because like a lot of those key results are embedded on the JSIPFS ones. Uh, and if you can see like things like Connection Manager and DHT and Secret Relay are clearly peer-to-peer, -peer, but they are part of the JSIPFS stack. Um, yeah, Connection Manager is progressing quite nicely. Like Pedro has been doing a great job just like owning that. Circuit Relay, Dimitri has been like solving last mile issues. Uh, lots of bug fixes everywhere. Um, and yeah, I've been also working on refactoring with peer-to-peer uh, there is an issue on just leap to be called leap to be next that lists all the issues that uh, are happening there. For the IPLD part, um, mostly this quarter it has been Volker that has been working on that, and, and I act as a support. Volker, I don't know if you are still around in this call, and if you want to share an update yourself, but like, okay, you prefer to good. Yeah, so on the on the IPLD side, um, yeah, so it's so that uh, JS IPLD stuff is basically me, 
<laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm basically working on this quarter to kind of get it cleaned up, um, getting some documentation, some tutorials, making it e easier to get started. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically it, what I work on. And two new formats were added uh, to just PLD land, Bitcoin and Zcash. So right now, I believe we have full feature authority with IPLD in Go, uh, with, I guess, the difference being that we have the DAG API available for people to try it out. And so, yeah, like there will be an example that Volker is working on or an updated example so that people can like check this out themselves. And I think this is it. Oh, there's a lot of work also in dynamic data and Peter is not around. Um, but Pedro, like so dynamic data, things like CRDTs, there, there is um, a repo for this working group that has a lot of issues with current um, research problems on CRT landscape, things like garbage collection, snapshot being fast syncs and so on. Uh, Pedro the, 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 has done a great job of like explaining those problems and explaining uh, why they are important. So definitely check that repo. And the thing that he has been that he has been focusing more for the last couple of weeks is really connection management for just leave your peer, which is the the main like the the, the place in just FS where a lot of resources get consumed. And so given that that is a super top priority, he kind of shifted his focus to focus on that piece. And and let me get the repo so that you can check check all those issues that I'm talking about. Um, I'll post it on the notes. You don't have to wait for me. <laughs> all right. Uh, then let's, Lido, let's go to the, we've, we've covered, well, I guess actually just to prompt, part of what, what's implicit in what David's saying and the way these are structured is uh, showing part of this work that the core working group is doing of giving more of a sense of what are the working groups and what are their responsibilities. Um, and part of that is a bunch of people have sort of moved out to being working primarily in working groups rather than in the core implementations of, of particular protocols. And so now we're kind of backfilling those teams to maintain the protocols. Um, and so we go IPFS, JS, IPFS, ah, cluster. Uh, um, Wyatt, you want to give a word? I think I saw Hector. Oh, Stephen yeah, has his hand up. Stephen, did you have a question? Uh, no, I can give the go update. Though. Ah, okay. Go, go ahead. Yeah, go for it. Give the go okay. update. Uh, so actually, Jeremy has moved a lot. Uh, like, so a lot of work has been uh, Magic Six K uh, text earlier. Uh, Visa and myself. Uh, uh, Visa has been working a lot on Hub and Ruben Ad significantly. It's doing quite well. Uh, I've been working on the LibGT refactor on the Go side. Uh, we're trying to do that to get quick support working. Uh, it's going a bit slow. I'm trying to work through some inconsistencies in how we use context. Not that important. Uh, we've also been trying to cut a new release. That is currently blocked on in some uh, all out from the uh, updated commands lib. We updated our uh, CLI uh, library and uh, have been running some bugs to fix that. Uh, that is basically the current status. I guess uh, Friedel has also been working on improving uh, the performance of seaboard decoding and encoding in uh, IPLD, and that's been part of some IPLD. That's a All right, more on Go at PFS, or is that it? I think that's it. All right, thanks to Wyatt or Hector. Do one of, one of you want to do the cluster update? Yep. There you go. Um, yeah, so in cluster, we are very mostly working on, on the objective number two. Cluster can ingest and store large files. Uh, this means that cluster should be able to, to distribute a large archive among multiple uh, IPFS nodes. And that's a very demanded uh, feature. 
It's our objective to have a working prototype by the end of this quarter, and Wyatt is uh, spearheading all this uh, work. Secondarily, I need someone mute, whoever is typing. David, could you mute? Thank you. Uh, yeah, secondarily, we have other objectives, which are also partially getting worked on. Uh, cluster is stable, production grade, IPFS for the class distribution. Um, we mostly group under this objective, just uh, fixing issues, uh, doing the small features, stability improvements, and, and a lot of testing. Uh, the testing side is not getting done too much so far. But we have to see, right? It, it depends how how we how we do the the large files uh, thing, and if we have some time at the end of the quarter, uh, we'll probably make some more progress there. And then down, down below we have uh, advanced fault tolerance. We put this as an objective, even even though we know it is uh, a rather long term, and it comes after after sharding after large files. Um, this means that we will support, yeah, like alternative uh, alternative uh, uh, strategies for fault tolerance, like uh, forward error correct correction, and we have like a small draft there, some some paragraphs of of how we do this, but we we're not gonna have time this quarter to to go into this. Using cluster is a delightful experience. Um, we wanted to get a logo and we would wanted to get some illustrations for this quarter and this is, uh, I think, underway. We also want to start thinking of having a website where we can put the documentation, etc. Um, yeah, as you can see, many of these we haven't started and we don't think we will have time for this, but it is good that we've written them down, wrote them down so, so we can carry them off to the, to the next quarter easily. Um, the cluster team will be growing um, next month, and we can talk about that next month probably. Um, and welcome, Adrian. And um, we're still looking to grow on the Kubernetes IPFS side of things, uh, which is a completely separate project. Um, but the main a stakeholder there right now is cluster because we have a lot of cluster tests um, for Kubernetes IPFS. And the last objective was uh, some symbiotic collaboration with partners. We wanted to, to start having closer collaborations with some people that may deploy and make use of IPFS cluster. We haven't started working on that, but um, yeah, it is probably something that is really going to materialize at start, starting next quarter to when we have uh, large file support because this is something that many groups would be interested in. Um, does anyone have any questions? Thanks, Victor. I Thank you. think that's getting towards the end of the list. Do I need, do we oh, web browsers, Fido. Oh, there you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like uh, for the first uh, part of this quarter, uh, in browser, in web browsers working group, mostly focused on the first one, uh, and I'd say third one uh, on the having a shared understanding of uh, how IPFS should work in web browsers. There was a lot of. Uh, prototyping uh, and uh, designing uh, design related work uh, done by, by Agatha and uh, at this stage we have uh, like mo most uh, free for uh, uh, around 70% I'd say of uh, the design work is done by Agatha and the team started to uh, extracting uh, some uh, design language into reusable components and libraries. We already are using it in the parts of Companion. Uh, IPFS desktop is totally being re redesigned uh, using this common uh, visual language. Uh, so that's an ongoing work. We'll continue 
and on the uh, moving towards IPFS working seamlessly in the web browsers, we have those two uh, key features uh, that will be released this quarter um, when we finish uh, solving all the user experience issues. First one is this window IPFS, uh, which exposes API in efficient manner so that we can have one node instead of one node per website. And second one is having IPFS companion, having uploading uh, of files to IPFS work without a uh, third party node. So that user can upload files even uh, that there is no Go IPFS installed in the system. Uh, those are our key features we are focusing on. Uh, some smaller things are solved. Uh, some new things uh, have a priority. So uh, we may be able to, to close some stuff, uh, but uh, uh, we may need to reprioritize, -pri for example, uh, Mozilla changed the way they publish the developer channel, which to be exact, they are shutting it down and we have to figure out a different way of uh, publishing uh, betas. So it's something we did not anticipate. And I think we need to address it as a part of moving towards IPFS working seamlessly in browsers or uh, as a part of second one. Uh, for the remaining part of this quarter, we'll be uh, trying to uh, address second one and maybe the fourth uh, one. Mostly, I'll be working on creating uh, this uh, spec of addressing on the, the centralized web and uh, helping others from the working group to, uh, to uh, work with their work on those uh, OKRs. Um, yeah, I think that's from my end. All right, thanks, Lido. And then, do we have anyone who can give an update on the docs and education? Oh, I, well, I, there's uh, Lars is not here, and then uh, Rob has been doing a lot of work on on re just preparing for an overhaul of the information architecture of our documentation. Those are the main updates on the docs and education. Uh, Victor, want to quickly touch on infra? Um, it's mainly Lars doing the infra, uh, but I do know he is moving forward with moving stuff into Terraform things as well. And Kyle is, is working on making the gateways better and handle our load better. That's as much as I know about the infrastructure stuff. But with the dev team enablement, which is the working group that I'm 100% I'm on, um, the plan is to move all the CI stuff to Jenkins so we can run it faster and we can do builds however we want with, with whatever we want. Basically more flexibility. Um, it's moving forward. We almost got it fully working in JS IPFS. Uh, Go IPFS is missing the Sharnas test right now and some parsing of the test inputs. Um, other than that, we have a bunch of projects that are using Jenkins already. Um, so it's, it's getting there. Then regarding the, the integration testing, uh, Dimitri has been doing some progress on the interop uh, repository. Uh, so we're moving forward with that as well, trying to make it a bit easier to, to write the test and to maintain the test as well. Um, with the developer productivity, which is the fourth uh, objective, we have, we, me, I haven't done too much on it. Uh, the plan was to have more time to focus on Azure and to, to make sure we have a maintainer there. I have not had too much time uh, so far, but I'm, I'm getting there. The most work have been on setting up a process for people to report time things uh, that I hope will be ready soon. Uh, then regarding the fifth one, 
the plan is to have a bit better maintenance and standard for module creation have not came very farther either and might not have much time left to work on this uh, this quarter. But the sixth one, I'm doing some good progress on trying to refactor the thefts, uh, mainly to isolate them so we could run them in parallel and that we don't have false, uh, positive false, I guess, for the tests, which happens frequently when we run tests and they forgot to clean something up. So making good progress there as well. And that's the, the quick overview of things. All right, I think that's everything. Did I miss anyone? Okay, and then I'll stop sharing. Uh, and then that's the update of the ongoing work this quarter. And the next agenda item is demos. So we have a four minute one on window.ipfs and five minutes on peer to peer testbed demo. And then we'll be, uh, oh, we have, we have time for one of them. So which, that's actually good. One is pre recorded. Okay, so we should we can just let people watch it on their own time. Sure. Great. Uh, and is that that's the link that's already there where it says window.ipfs scope based permissions? Yeah, yeah, it's related to, to this uh, document I've talked about uh, before. So, okay. And then who, who proposed the peer to peer testbed demo? Me. Oh, P5. Go for it. Cool. Um, yeah, it's to be really quick. I'll do this lightning fast. But um, Forrest uh, introduced some request tracing stuff into libp 2 p a little while ago. And uh, we're been, we've been working on our distributed algorithms are awful, and we need to improve them. Uh, and to do that, we sort of need to learn a few things about writing a good distributed algorithm. And so uh, I just wanted to make everybody aware of this quick uh, repo uh, that we've built to sort of help, because we think it'll help other people understand peer-to-peer -peer algorithms a little better. Uh, through visualizing through request tracing. So really quickly, I will share my screen and hopefully we can walk through some of this. So um, for those of you, yeah, this is the repo itself. Uh, it's really, really small, um, but it basically only does one thing. Uh, you can run peer-to-peer -peer testbed and it'll spin up a simulated network with, in this case, 20 nodes in it. Uh, and then it'll do a couple peer-to-peer -peer things. It'll record those as traces and make that available at uh, this URL, which I can show you here. Ah. Um, so if we go to this, hit this. This is actually a recording of traces of a couple of distributed algorithms in execution. So we can actually see the like setup. Um, and if I, I find this, personally, I find this tracing sort of uh, information really nice. This span sort of says this is how long it took to set things up. This is the creation of the actual network. And then we can drill into the actual peer connection work. And so this is every peer dialing to every other peer in our little simulated network. And we can see how long each one of those took. Um, and then where I think it gets more interesting is uh, building sort of using libp 2 p to do distributed algorithms. We can actually sort of walk through what happened uh, when the uh, test spun up. It sort of ran a, a Shandy Lamport snapshot. Um, I have a better demonstration here. Um, which, and so this actually shows the execution of each peer running the snapshot um, in parallel. Uh, and so I don't want to take up too much time because I know everybody has to leave for one o'clock, but I just want to make everybody aware of this. Uh, we're going to be sort of actively trying to develop good examples of peer-to-peer -peer algorithms um, in this repo and testing them out here first uh, with an emphasis on request tracing um, because I think that it's a really nice demonstration of the actual execution of an individual request. And using the open tracing protocol, you can actually it's a set, attach uh, arbitrary state to any uh, trace. And so here you can actually see what each, um, in the Shandy Lamport snapshot, it's a uh, recording of each peer's local state at a given point. Um, and so you can actually see what each peer recorded, uh, which makes for, I think it makes it a little easier to sort of tell the story of a distributed algorithm uh, in action. And uh, yeah, it's, been, it's already been uh, massively helpful for us in terms of debugging and understanding. As you can see, we have some sort of bug where uh, this, the snapshot is finalizing too early. Um, but yeah, uh, I, so the, peer, the repos here would be more than welcome to uh, welcome any pull requests on it. And what I think will be the most exciting is when uh, uh, the new logging package ships for um, inside of IPFS itself, this can, you can actually leverage events in Go log, uh, and those will show up in traces as events as well. So you actually will get uh, in, introspection into the whole uh, libp2p stack as it's executing, which will be, I think, really exciting.
Um, yeah, so that's about it. I'd be happy to take questions if anybody has any. Anyone have questions? No, oh, amazing. I love it when I give a perfect demo. It's always great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, PR is welcome. Sorry, go ahead, Steve. I can't say the things that go team. We're very happy with this. Be awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. PR is welcome. If you want to submit something in there, and particularly if you want to tell us what we're doing wrong, that would be like our biggest <laughs> welcome thing. But yeah, I think it'd be really fun to develop some examples for people so they can see these things work. So, cool. Great. Thank you, and thank you for finishing one minute before the hour. Um, so thanks everyone. That was sort of a reversion back to our hour long format. Um, and that's actually some, a good thing to flag for redesigning things. When we have these periodic updates, we will have to have longer calls. Um, but better to have it scheduled so everyone knows. Um, all right, so thank you everyone. And we'll see you online this week. And we'll have a bunch of updates for next week, including a fixed helper bot, giving people, assigning people to be moderator and note taker next week. So thank you. See you around. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.